Sean Williamson, you'll know him as Barry from EastEnders. In 2017, you went on Celebrity Big Brother. Why did you do that? Tax bill. Was it? it really? It was a tax bill? I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest. If you see an actor of any calibre on there, it's got to be a tax bill. It has to be. I was lucky because I, I, I'd watched it. I'd always watched it and I'd experienced other people's discomfort and there have been some real creatures on there. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Perez Hilton, I don't care calling him a creature, you know, and um, someone called Bear and do you know what I mean? And, and, yeah. and they were real wind, proper wind-up merchants. Yeah. And they'd force several people to leave as opposed to, you know, people were going to hit them and saying, I've got to go, otherwise I'll assault you. Yeah. So I thought, oh, no one going to make me do that. And I was lucky. The youngsters gave me a, a, a fair bit of respect, actually. They weren't a bad lot at all. And uh, there was a, the late Derek Akora was in there. I How did you get on with, with Derek Akora? They were desperate because we ended up friends. So they were desperate in, in the diary room for me to say he was a fraud. Oh, were I they? I just ended up saying... I believe Derek believes everything he sees and feels, and yeah. that's it. Yeah, because I've always wanted. I, I mean, he's gone now. He's he, but I, I always wanted to ask him why he only gets possessed by Scouse ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Graham Mack, and my guest is Alan Alder. Your podcast is called Clear and Vivid. What podcast do you listen to, Alan? I have. I have so little time because of the work I do. I don't listen to many podcasts. I listen I, I some science podcasts. In our country, we have a radio show called Science Friday, and I like that a lot. I don't listen to many. What podcasts do you listen to? I listen to, I like Mark Maron because it's a long-form interview with one of his guests. Yeah, I, 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 he interviewed me and I interviewed him. And he does the same thing. He goes for a conversation. Yeah. I never saw him look at a note while we were talking. He probably had a few things in mind he wanted to talk about. Yeah. But mostly it, it, the conversation happened because things evolved. Yeah. And one of the best podcasts I ever heard was Mark Marin interviewing o a Barack Obama. Yeah, in his garage. <laughs> in his garage. Yeah. And I had never heard Obama be so available before, so unaware that he was the president. Yeah. He was a smart, funny person who could play with Mark Marin. Yeah. It, it's funny. He, I, As I remember, the book you were talking about before, Never Have Your Dog Stuff. Yeah. It's either that or my second book. I can't remember. I was nominated for a Grammy for reading the book on audio, and so was Barack Obama for his book. And of course, he won. And I listened. And I knew he would because I listened to his reading. It was fantastic. Talk about playing characters. He could play a variety of people and sound like someone else, but with the attitude, not just the, uh, not just the accent. So you're telling me that a world famous actor and a man who trains people how to act was beaten by an amateur. He's hardly an amateur. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't have the experience and, and the, uh, the credentials that you do, though, does he? He's been on more television shows than I have in my whole life. <laughs> and I suppose he's played a variety of roles as well, because uh, being the president, you have to... Who was it said to be the president? You have to be a cold-blooded killer. You have to be able to order the attack on the, the garrison and then go to the cocktail party. Right, and then go to the survivors when uh, yeah after after you take off your tux yeah I, I never have understood because so much of that is true I've never understood why so many people want to be president yeah. The former Newsnight presenter, Gavin Esler, in 2012, you published a book called Lessons from the Top: How Leaders Succeed Through the Power of Stories. What are these stories and why are they so important? What happened was I was trying to think. I'd met so many, lead, uh, you know, uh, Blair, Clinton, Thatcher, Angela Merkel, Dolly Parton, who features quite heavily in the book because she's a great storyteller. Lots and lots of people. And I tried to figure out how is it that some people connect and some people don't. I mean, there's some, there's some very bright people who go into politics and they don't quite 
connect with uh, the general public. And I realised that there's three basic stories and every single one of the successful leaders tell those same three stories. And they are, who am I as a person? Who are we as a group? And then if you're still listening, they can tell you where we're going with this, what, what that leader is going to do. So, for example, Mrs Thatcher, I'm just the grocer's daughter from Grantham. Bill Clinton, I'm the boy from Hope. And uh, Donald Trump, I'm the greatest billionaire business person in the entire world. Now, this can be entirely fictitious, but it's always only part of the story. I mean, Mrs Thatcher was many more things than the grocer's daughter from Grantham, but that's the story she wanted to tell. Bill Clinton, when I first bumped into him, and literally bumped into him, he was out jogging, he said, I'm just the boy from Hope, Hope, Arkansas being the town that he came from. Now, there's many other things you could say about these leaders, but that's the one little nugget they wanted to get in your brain. And then uh, where, who are we? Well, you know, Mrs. Thatcher redefined both the Conservative Party and the country and Bill Clinton. You know, we're not the old Democrats. We are the new Democrats. And Tony Blair did the same thing and others. And then if you're still listening, as I say, you might listen to their policies. And one of the problems with some politicians who lose, Hillary Clinton's one, Ed Miliband's another, whatever the greatness or otherwise of the policies, the, the third bit, if they haven't really sold you the idea of who they are in a way that you like, everybody knew who Hillary Clinton was, but she was very divisive and many people didn't like her. I, don't, I personally don't think people really knew who Ed Miliband was. I mean, he's a very bright, bright guy. Maybe he would have been a good prime minister or a bad prime minister. But nobody listened to his 300 policies or whatever they were until he properly connected. And so that, that's what the book's about. Uh, as a result of that book, I continue to do lots of speaking to businesses in particular because a lot of businesses are trying to figure out what their identity actually is. And quite often the chief executives want to discuss that as well because all leadership positions are quite difficult and people in business have very much woken up to the fact that just to be able to do a good job isn't good enough. I mean, one of the things I say, and this, this came from a, from a banker, uh, a CEO of a major bank who I was discussing this with. He asked me to come in and chat to him. And he said, oh, he said, I get it. I get it. Um, if hard skills were everything, then Spock would have been commander of the USS Enterprise. <laughs> and I said, Brilliant. that's great. I'm going, to put that in the, I'm going to put that in the book the next time I rewrite it. <laughs> Alan Alder. Alan, you played Hawkeye Pierce on MASH for 11 seasons. How about censorship back then? Because it started in 72. Did that change as the series went along? Could you get away with a lot more? Yes. It turns out that forbidden words are not so forbidden if you're really popular. (laughs) (laughs) Which is counterintuitive. You think you'd be able to get away with more when when hardly anybody's watching it, wouldn't you? When nobody's listening, right? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) So... In one of the first few shows, Radar had a line in which he said, uh, I, I don't know about that, sir. I'm a virgin at that. With no sexual meaning. It just meant he was unfamiliar with the subject. The censor said, you can't say the word virgin. So Larry Gelbart, the head writer, was really upset at that. So he wrote a line in the next show that he knew they couldn't take out. I say to a kid on a stretcher, where are you from, son? He says, the Virgin Islands, sir. <laughs> Did it become a bit of a game then to see what you could get in? It, w- it was a, uh, a morbid game because sometimes you needed the the juice, the sauce of a word that really has no, no repugnance to it. It's common talk, but they, they were fastidious. I mean, so fastidious that in one show, there's, it's the show that I wrote, there was a jock strap on a table. Do you use that word over there, jock yeah, strap? Yeah, we, we know what that is, yeah. Okay. So Loretta comes into the, uh, Margaret comes into the tent and sees it and says, how dare you parade that thing before me? Well, the centers were more fastidious than she was. They said, not only can you not have a jockstrap, you can't even have a white piece of cloth representing a jockstrap. On the, now, this, this to, to show the sexism at the same time of the rampant uh, censorship, in many shows, I had walked through clotheslines 
or the equivalent shot of this, walking through clotheslines filled with women's brassieres and panties. <laughs> but a man's intimate apparel is somehow sacred, and you can't show that. That's, that's forbidden. So the whole thing was silly. The funniest story I heard about censorship on MASH, and maybe you can confirm whether it's true or not. I'll tell you where I heard it. You know Ken Levine, one of the writers on yeah, MASH? He has a sure. great podcast called Hollywood and Levine. And he told this story about apparently there was a, a visiting general or something, and the colonel said, uh, to take this man to the VIP tent. And the line was supposed to be, radar was supposed to say, right this way, your vip penis." <laughs> and that, and that they was, got I, it. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know about that. Which I think should be fine because, first of all, penis isn't a swear word. And secondly, if kids are so young they don't know what it means, they're not even going to hear it. They'll write this way, your VI penis. So it just shows how touchy they, they, they could have been. So you, if, if he had said, write this way, your, your vagina, that would have been allowed. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Based on, the, on, on the, the precedent set over the jockstrap and the knickers, yeah. Well, let's go on Zoom now then and talk to Piper Terrett, the host of the Lockdown Lowdown podcast. Piper, I know you're a fan of the audio books that I narrate. You know, I've been looking at the list of books I can audition for. So many of them are dirty books. <laughs> you know okay. where the picture cover has got a woman with a cleavage and two muscular men? Kind of oh, I know exactly the kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I just don't think I'm comfortable with that kind of stuff. No. <laughs> well, the Darrington book went a little bit further. The really? One that, yeah. Spitfire? The, no, there no, some, Spitfire, no. there's nothing in it. No, there's no, 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 it didn't no, sound no. like in the no, care no. home. The, the no. Darrington book is the other one. The Darrington book is... is not much room in the Spitfire either. No. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's possible. I, I, I don't know. No, let's no. not go there. Let's okay, not sorry. Let's joystick. Okay, let's no, get that out of there. Okay. Right. joystick. <laughs> right. So, Chokes away. Okay. Yeah. So, no, the Darrington book is what is known as a Regency romance. This was the okay. one where the bloke came back from the sea, the guy with the servants, and he was in Brighton. Oh, yes. I remember yeah. now. That yeah. one, towards the end, got a little graphic, but nothing. Oh, really? Well, yeah. they get together and, you know, uh, yeah. he, you know, the taffeta is, is, is ruffled. And... <laughs> <laughs> You know, well, I can see you squirming already. So the yeah, thought yeah. of them having to do erotica the, 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 bo and... the bodice opened and um, he oh. ended up um, way a down there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. But there was, okay. but and that was as graphic as it got, which is fairly graphic in my <laughs> eyes. <laughs> yeah. So I did look at one yesterday, one of these erotic oh, ones, yeah. because they are paying a royalty share plus. And this one was some was in the top best sellers, so it would yeah. sell as well because they have to do that because you're going to get the royalty share, and it was paying a royalty share plus. Yeah. And so I looked at the audition, and the audition was extremely graphic. Really? Okay. The language used, for instance, was. Oh, really? Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So. I don't know if I'm cut out for that kind of work. Yeah, is it is it sweary sweary yeah. language or is it kind of anatomical? It, it's okay. sweary language to describe anatomical. See, see you and, next Tuesday, that sort of thing. I didn't see that word. Right. Okay. But there was there was the the f word was in there. Shocking. Yeah. But Oof. it was not used as an adjective. It was used as a description of a procedure. Right. Okay. I guess you, you know what I mean. Yeah. Yes, and so oh, no, I don't know if I'm cut out for that. I just yeah, I know what you mean because you got you've got to well, you got to give your all to it. We've got to suspend the disbelief and yeah, and oh yeah, you got to be. And, so yeah. I did have a thought in the night, but I'm not sure if I want to go this way. Mm. You because one of my issues is yeah, if I do a kids book, which I want <laughs> to do the kids books, I do <laughs> want to do the kids books, right? Yeah, yeah, you're gonna yeah, you my name. Car. My name is on the cover of the book. Yeah, I see so, your dilemma. So, so yeah. But yeah. there is an option, but oh. I still don't know if I'm ready for it. You don't have to give your real name. You can make up an, a, a pseudonym. Pseudonym, yeah. So I could, have a, I could have a porn star name. <laughs> 
So just, if you got enough, what would it be? Work. What well, would the, it be? Well, I don't know. I haven't Big Mac or something. D- I don't know. I I, um, <laughs> I haven't thought that deeply, but that's what you do, isn't it? <laughs> what well, did it used to be? The name of your first pet, and then the street you grew up in, or I can't remember. It something was like something that, isn't it? like that. There is a rule to it, isn't there? <sighs> yeah. So you... so that's an option, but I still don't know. What do you think? Because mm. I'd still have to do it. You would have to do it, yeah. You would have to do it. <laughs> no, that, I don't. I think I. You just start laughing. That's yeah, I know that. There's part of that, and part of it's like really uncomfortable. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. So I just because I think yeah. that would be a problem as well if you did get known for narrating. You go like, oh, this guy always because I pick the books yeah. that I do. They go, oh, this guy always picks a good book. If then all of what is it that Dennis Norden said? It would be like seeing Santa eating venison. 